to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ in june of the year 2015 the Supreme Court of the United States of America took up the case about homosexuality and whether gay marriage would be legal in the United States of America. A majority on that Supreme Court ruled that homosexuality is now legal in all states in the United States of America. With such a far-reaching and morally important decision, today we ask, what does God say on the truth about homosexuality? We welcome you today to our study of this subject. And as always, we encourage you to visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com, where you can find a host of Bible study materials, not just on subjects like these, but on a host of subjects concerning the Bible, the church, and salvation. Please visit that website, order some of our CDs. If you've got a question or DVDs, if you've got a question, don't hesitate to email or contact us. We'd love to help you with that. And as always, the Gospel of Christ is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ worldwide. If you don't know much about the Lord's Church in your area, friend, they'd love for you to stop by. If you'd like to study the Bible, they'd love to sit down and study the Scriptures with you and help you in any way in your journey to follow the Word of God and live according to the teaching of Jesus Christ. As we think today about the subject of homosexuality, I want you to listen carefully to how we're going to begin and the emphasis and motive for which we say these things. Friend, please listen very carefully. In the Lord's church and the God of heaven wants every person involved in homosexuality to go to heaven and we want them to be saved. We love them. We want them to go to heaven. We want them to be saved. But friend, you cannot be saved and remain in that ungodly state. Is homosexuality authorized by God? It, regardless of what the Supreme Court of the United States of America may say, what does the divine court of God of which all men will one day stand and give an account of? What does it say? That's the question we're considering today. And so we love those who are involved in this problem. We want them to go to heaven. We're not mad or angry personally at them, although the sin makes God and Christians angry of those people. Our motive is for them to go to heaven and to love them and help them see God's way. Our emphasis in this lesson is simply upon the Bible. It doesn't matter. Listen carefully. It doesn't matter what popular opinion says. It doesn't matter what you think and what I think. It doesn't matter what society wants. It doesn't matter what the Supreme Court of the United States of America says is right or wrong. The only thing that matters and will affect our eternal destiny is, what does this book say? Is there any word from the Lord on this subject? And so let's begin by realizing that every person is a creation of Almighty God. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 27. The Bible tells us that the Lord God made man in His own image, and God, Genesis 1, verse 27, male and female, He made them. I'm made in the image of God. I'm made with the, the Spirit of God. God put in me, the Spirit that God put in me, and God made man male and female. Listen carefully. God did not make male and male and female and female. It's not the way God did it. God did not make Adam and Steve. God made Adam and Eve. One man, one woman, 
That's the way God made His creation, and that is the natural way. The propagating of the human earth, the human race, was to survive in this land. Now, I want you to notice some passages that, that will clearly illustrate that homosexuality and the homosexual lifestyle is contrary to the teaching of this book, and that lifestyle does not please the God of heaven. Let's go back to the origin of the family. Would you look in your Bible with me in Genesis chapter 2? And I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse number 24. What did God do when He originated the family? Look in Genesis 2 verse 24. The Bible says, Therefore, or for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they, the two, shall become one flesh. Well, what's the reason for that? You back up just a little bit, and God was looking for a companion. Not good for man to be alone. Genesis 2 verse 18, I'll make a helper comparable to him, a companion. And so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. God took one of Adam's ribs, and from that rib He made woman. And when Adam saw her, he said, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man for this reason, since God created woman out of man and for man, for that reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. When the originator and author of mankind created the home and the family and marriage, how did he do it? One man, one woman, for life. God made woman out of man. Man is to leave father and mother, not father and father and mother and mother. Man is to leave father and mother, be joined to his wife, not his husband, be joined to his wife, and the two are to become one flesh. And so we, we notice from the very beginning of time, with God's perfect and original plan for the home, there is no indication that homosexuality ever was right with God. It wasn't. By the things God said and taught here about His family and His home, we know that homosexuality is not right for a Christian. Now friend, we understand that our media, the world in which we live in, certain political groups and parties are just heavily promoting this homosexual agenda. You turn on the television and it seems like everything you see has something to do with homosexuality. Whether it's a game show, whether it's some reality TV show, whether it's a sitcom, homosexuality is being pushed down our throats by the media. People are trying to force this issue on us in so many ways and so it is heavily promoted and pushed by our media today. But again, I'm not concerned with what political parties or groups or popularity or the media wants us to do. I want to know, what does the God of heaven say on this subject? Let's direct our attention to another passage in the Bible, teaching homosexuality is a sin. Look in your Bible in Genesis chapter 19, verse number 5. This is the context of Sodom and Gomorrah and the immorality for which God destroyed these towns. The Bible says in Genesis 19.5, And they called the Lot, these men of the city called the Lot, and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. God sent two angels. Two men to the family, two angels to the family of Lot to warn them to get out of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot encourages them to stay. They come into his home. And this is how wicked the city is. This is the city, the wickedness that caused this city to be destroyed. The people of that town heard there were new people in town. They were at Lot's house. And so the men of that city came to that house and they said, where are these new people? Bring them out so that we can have sex with them. Now friend, you ever wonder why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed? 
You read this verse and it doesn't take long to figure it out. Why did God call this city wicked, immoral, and why was it destroyed? Homosexuality was running rampant in Sodom and Gomorrah and God does not at all approve of that. Now someone says, well, those are principles and those are examples, but where does the Bible say God doesn't approve of homosexuality? I direct your attention to Leviticus chapter 18, verse number 22. Notice the specific language of the Bible. Look in Leviticus chapter 18, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse number 22. The Bible says, You shall not lie with a male as with a, bo a woman. It is an abomination. Now someone says, okay, where's the verse in the Bible that says homosexuality is wrong? In the Old Testament, it's right here. God says, do not lie with a man, and lie indicates sexual relations. Do not have sexual relations with a man as with a woman. It's an abomination. God hates it. And God clearly commands one not to do it. And someone says, well, how serious is God about that? Let's see. Flip over to Leviticus 20, verse 13. Same book, same context. The Scripture says in Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 13, If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Now watch this. They shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them. How did God feel about people who broke His law and lived in homosexuality? God said they shall be put to death. God knew it was a crime against Him, a crime against humanity, and it was contrary to His will, and they suffered the consequences because of that. And so we need to realize in the Old Testament, God was not at all happy with these actions. Let me give you another sad example. Look in Judges chapter 19. The book of Judges is a very dark time in the history of Israel. Judges tells us in Judges 17, 6 and Judges 21, verse 25, in those days there was no king in Israel. It was a society of anarchy. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, here you've got another man. And so people come to him. Listen to Judges 19, verses 22 and 23. As they were enjoying themselves, this man and the stranger that came to his house, as they were enjoying themselves, suddenly certain men of the city, perverted men, surrounded the house and beat on the door. They spoke to the master of the house, the old man saying, Bring out the man who came to your house that we may know him carnally. But the man, the master of the house, went out to them and said to them, listen to his words, No, my brethren, I beg you, do not act so wickedly, seeing this man has come into my house, do not commit this outrage. And so, uh, hard for us to understand, and yet this city was so involved in homosexuality, a stranger comes to town, and their first thought is, let's go over and have homosexual sex with him. And so they come to that man's house. They beat on the door. But I want you to listen to what the man said. He said, I'm not sending him out. Don't do this wickedness. Don't commit this outrage. How was it thought of? Homosexuality was thought of as wickedness and an outrage. It was never, ever approved by God. Another passage in the Old Testament is 1 Kings chapter 15, verse number 12. And again, we're just looking at what the Bible has to say on the subject of homosexuality. 1 Kings chapter 15, notice what the Scripture will say in verse number 12. The Bible says of Asa, "...and he banished the perverted persons from the land and removed all the idols that his father had made. Now, if you look in your Bible, and especially in the footnote, you'll see there that the Hebrew word for perverted person, it says those practicing sodomy, homosexuality, as a religious prostitution. What? What were these perverted persons? They were a group of homosexual people who got together and had homosexual sex as part of their religion, as part of their way of life. And Asa, approved by God, 
banished those people from the land. He got rid of them. But notice this. The word that was chosen to describe that was perverted persons. Someone involved in homosexual activity. My friends, the Bible describes as a pervert. And we think of a pervert maybe as a peeping Tom, maybe as somebody who wants to have sex with a child, but homosexuality, a person involved in that, is just as much a pervert as someone who does other heinous sexual crimes that are contrary to the will of God. Now, someone may be thinking, okay, that's the Old Testament. Those passages might say something about it, but today we're living under the New Testament. What does Jesus say about homosexuality? You know, I actually heard someone say, Jesus never says anything against homosexuality, therefore He had no problem with it. Wait a minute. Jesus directly spoke to what marriage was, who it was between, all the way back to the origin. He solidified and found, put His foundational firm agreement upon God's command. Let me illustrate. Matthew 19, 4. They come to Jesus and they've got this question in verses 4 through 6. Uh, Can a man divorce his wife for any reason? Jesus said, from the beginning was not so. And He quotes from Genesis 2, verse 24. This reason, a man... This is what Jesus said. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, be the, joined together, the two shall become one flesh. What God has joined together, let not man separate. Did Jesus say anything about marriage in the home? My friend, I'll assure you from the Bible, in Matthew 19, 4 through 6, Jesus put His stamp of approval on the fact that marriage was between one man, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, one man, one woman, and that is Jesus' word on what marriage is. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Not man and a man, or a woman and a woman, according to the words of Jesus. Now, understanding that the men who wrote the Bible were disciples of Christ, were under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and were under the control of God. 2 Peter 1 verse 3, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, we then look to the rest of the New Testament to see what God, Jesus, His apostles, and Christians are to believe about homosexuality. Friend, I want you to listen real carefully to this next verse. This verse clearly teaches, I'm not talking about suggest or hints at the idea. This verse clearly teaches it is a sin in the New Testament age today for someone to be involved in homosexuality. The verse... Romans chapter 1, and I want you to look in your own Bible. Romans chapter 1, notice what the Bible will say in verses 26 through 28. That's Romans chapter 1. Look beginning in verse number 26. The Bible says, For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, watch this now, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature, Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. How does God describe homosexuality? Here's what He says, verse number 26, it is a vile, filthy or disgusting is the idea of passion. It is unnatural or against nature. Now, I want you to stop and think about this. When we talk about against nature, that's not the way things God designed things to work. Let me illustrate. If everybody were homosexual, what would happen to the human race in one generation? There would be no human race in one generation. It just doesn't work with men and men and women with women. It is against nature. It is vile and disgusting. God says men with men committing what is shameful. It is something that ought to be a shame. We ought to, Jeremiah 8 verse 12, this is how bad Israel got. They would got to a point where they could no longer blush. And friend, we're almost to that point in our society where homosexuality doesn't bother us and isn't shameful like it ought to be. But listen carefully. God says it's vile 
It's unnatural. It's shameful. And it is a penalty deserving of punishment. It's an error. It's a mistake. It's a sin deserving of punishment. What's that mean? Well, let's direct our attention to another passage which helps us to see exactly what that penalty is. Would you turn your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20? That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. And friend, as we think about this passage, I want you to hear clearly what God is saying and what we're saying today. The Bible teaches among other sins, don't get me wrong, there are other sins mentioned here, but the Bible teaches that those who continue in a homosexual lifestyle, live in it, practice it, and die in it, will not go to heaven. And that's specifically what the Bible is about to say. Notice 1 Corinthians 6, beginning in verse 9. Do you not know, Paul says, that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? These are people who are not a part, cannot be a part of God's kingdom, will not go to heaven. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God, and such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, what did Paul, what did God say here? What did the Holy Spirit say here? The God of heaven said, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? People that he's about to list are living in unrighteous lives and they will not go to heaven. Idolaters, adultery, uh, revelry, drunkenness, fornication, immorality, but don't miss this, homosexuals and sodomites, if they continue in that lifestyle, will not go to heaven. It is unrighteous and they will not enter the kingdom of God. Now, someone says, well, how, where's the Bible teach you got to come out of that to go to heaven? And such were some of you. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. As we initially said, friend, we want to be plain. We want to clearly say what the Bible says on this matter. There's so much confusion that there's no need whatsoever to beat around the bush. Friend, we also want people to know you can come out of that. You can be washed and become clean. You can put that behind you. And God loves you and we love you and we want people involved in that to go to heaven. But you can't continue in it and think to yourself, God says it's okay, I can live this way, and Jesus will be okay with it. And the Bible is clearly said from the New Testament, that's just not the case. Now, I want to look at a couple of other passages with you. Notice what 1 Timothy chapter 1. Does the Bible in the New Testament anywhere else teach homosexuality is contrary to the will of God? It absolutely does. Look in 1 Timothy chapter 1. I want you to notice verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, beginning in verse 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, the word for homosexuality, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is anything other that is contrary to Sound doctrine. Lawless, unholy, ungodly, immoral. A host of people are mentioned there. Murderers, immoral people, and sodomy. Sodomy is ungodly and unholy. And it's not living according to the teaching of the New Testament. One last verse I want to mention. Jude verse 7 in the New Testament also teaches that homosexuality is not according to the will of God. Listen to this verse. Verse number 7. 
Jude says, As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual morality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, we read that passage earlier in the book of Genesis. And do you remember what happened? What was that strange flesh that they went after immorality in Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, they said to the men who came, Bring them out to us that we can know them carnally. And so that's the reference made here. And Jude says those people involved in that homosexual activity are suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. They're going to be lost because of their immoral homosexual activity. Now, let's address one objection that we often hear. I hear it, you hear it, media promotes it. People say, well... They can't help it. They're just born that way. Well, friend, the Bible doesn't teach that. It teaches contrary to that. Genesis 1.26, God said, Let us make man in our image. If I'm made in the image of God, and God created one man and one woman for life, I'm not created to be homosexual. That's not the way God made me. And, I want you to listen real carefully to this, science and the evidence will not support that fact. Someone says we're born that way, there's nothing they can do about it. Let me give you an example. In a study done by Simon LeVay, Simon LeVay helped in, or he helped in mapping the human genome and the DNA, and here's what he said. He said, it's important to stress what I didn't find. I did not prove that homosexuality is genetic or find a genetic cause for being gay. I did not show that gay men are born that way. The most common mistake people make interpreting my work. Nor did I locate a gay sinner in the brain. This is Simon LeVay, homosexuality, the innate immutable argument finds no science in the Bible by Jeffrey Robinson, Shirley Clark, and Bird Dean. Now, wh what did he say? I helped in mapping the human genome. I didn't find a gay gene. You cannot find that gay center in the brain. It's not built into our DNA. What's he saying? God says you're not born that way. Science says we found no proof you're born that way. And so the evidence is not there. What do we know? Homosexuality is contrary to the will of God. Friend, if you're involved in that, we want you to know the God of heaven loves you, we love you, but you cannot. You cannot remain in that action and be right. You've got to leave that behind, repent, and turn to God. And our hope and prayer is that you'll do that if you're involved in homosexuality. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is taking the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we do and say. And unlike many other religious groups, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Right. This is the gospel of Christ. And to God we encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.